The depth blur filter in Photoshop is one of the most impressive tools for enhancing background blur and improving the depth of field in your images. However, if you just apply this onto a photo, it usually doesn't look very good. So I'm gonna show you how to make it look more realistic here in this tutorial. Now for our first example, we have a very defined subject and there is already a bit of background blur in this photo. However, let's enhance it using the depth blur filter. To access the depth blur filter, all we need to do is go to filter and down here to neural filters. In the new window that appears, we'll go down to the depth blur option and make sure to turn this on. Now, if you haven't used this filter before, you may need to download it first, in which case you'll see this little cloud icon, which will import the filter into Photoshop and then you'll be ready to go. Now at this point, Photoshop has scanned my image and has tried to figure out where I need to have in focus and where I need to have blurred. Now, without setting a focal point, Photoshop will have a hard time with this. Now, for example, I could click here within this focal point preview and I could click right on my subject like so. Now Photoshop will make that subject in focus or anything near this focal point in focus while everything else remains blurred. However, if we zoom in at some of the details around our subject, you can see her hair is a bit blurry, or part of her hand is a bit blurry, and it just doesn't look super good. So in the cases that we have a clear subject like this, it's often better to skip setting a focal point and instead click the focus subject option. So clicking that to enable it. Now Photoshop will take a automatic selection of our subject and zooming in, we can see it has a much better result, especially around the flowers, around her hand, and around her hat as well. So this is a much cleaner result than what we had before. However, our image still isn't looking very realistic, and that's because when you take a photo with a wide aperture, the focus gradually fades away. But in this case, you can see that this building here is equally as blurred as the buildings further away, which doesn't really make a ton of sense. So that's where we have two easy sliders to adjust to make this look a little more realistic. The first option is the focal range, and if our focal range is set to zero, basically anything directly behind our subject is going to be affected by the full intensity of our blur strength. But if I move this focal range slider up like so, this will move that max blur amount further down into my photo, so that way the full strength of our blur effect is applied more in the further areas of the image rather than the ones that are close behind our subject, and that will help us to get a more realistic looking depth of field or background blur essentially. Now what I typically like to do is move this focal range all the way up to 100, and then move the blur strength all the way up to 100 as well. That way it's really easy to see exactly what is being affected by the blur. Now with that set, I'm gonna move the focal range back a few points like this so we can see where is starting to be affected on the parts closer to our subject. In this case, I don't want this wall to be so blurred out, so I'm going to continue to increase that focal range. Right around 90 seems like a good spot for this photo. Now since this background blur looks just a little bit too intense, it doesn't look realistic, we need to bring down the blur strength once again. So I'm going to bring this slider down until we find a point that the background blur has a nice transition between our subject being in focus and then into the full strength of our added blur here. So in this case, I'm quite happy with how this is looking. We have our subject in focus. We have the objects close behind our subject slightly out of focus and the things furthest away are most out of focus and we did that all with the focal range and the blur strength. Now we do have a few other settings here to adjust the look of the photo. However, I would just recommend using adjustment layers instead because it's a little bit more customizable and easier to go back and edit. So with this tool, I only edit these two sliders typically. Now from there, we'll go to the output setting and we'll set this to smart filter and we'll click OK. Now that we'll convert our image into a smart object with a smart filter attached. Now the beauty of this is that we can easily paint on this smart filter mask to adjust where the blur is visible or we can double click on the neural filters here to reopen that adjustment and edit any of the background blur that we have added here. Now this particular example was pretty straightforward because Photoshop was able to easily select our subject and then define the background blur from there. But there is situations where Photoshop will have a harder time to define where your subject is and sometimes the focal point doesn't really work super well and you don't get a perfect result. So we're going to go through a less than perfect example next to show you how we can use multiple neural filters together to get the perfect background blur no matter the situation. In this next example, we're gonna once again add the neural filter just like we did before. With our image layer selected, we'll go up to filter and down here to neural filters. From there, you guessed it, we're gonna turn on the depth blur once again. This time I'll try to set a focal point by clicking on the window of the car. But the problem with this is that if I click on the window, the window's in focus. If I click on the 
grill here. The grill is in focus, but the window's out of focus. But the background blur here is kind of like the strength that I was looking for. So even if I brought down the blur strength and changed the focal range, things just still aren't looking quite perfect for me. So instead, I'm gonna choose the focus subject option. But the problem here is now it's selected some of the tree, parts throughout the windows here are not blurred, and there's some areas around the roof of the car that are also not being blurred out. And that's because Photoshop has added these areas as part of our subject. So this is a common situation that you'll run into with this effect, and I'm gonna show you the workaround right now. So for now, what we need to do is just add a general blur strength that we're happy with, regardless of these little hiccups around our photo. So I'm gonna set my blur strength a little bit higher, and then I'll set my focal range back a little bit. Now we need to just remember the general areas that we have the focal range and the blur strength for. So in this case, 50 and 40. With this all looking good, I'm gonna set the output here to Smart Filter and click OK. Now our blur effect has been applied as a smart filter below our image. That way we can easily go and edit it once again by double clicking on the neural filters. However, we need to create another neural filter on a second layer to touch up these trouble areas here. So I'm going to press Command or Control J to duplicate my image layer. Then I'll right click on my smart filters and go to Clear Smart Filters. Now we have an image that has no background blur whatsoever. Next, we'll go up to Filter, and neural filters to apply the depth blur once again on our new layer. Go into depth blur to enable that. Now, like I said before, we're gonna increase the focal range to the similar area that we had previously. So that was 50 and then our blur strength was 40. But looking at our image, you can see how the tree is nicely blurred as well as around the roof, but the parts through the window here are still in perfect focus. And the reason for that is because our focal range is set to too high of a value, meaning that our focus point is set further back in the photo than needed. So I'll decrease the focal range until I'm happy with the amount of blur that's in these windows here. So that looks pretty good to me. Now with all this complete, we're gonna set the output here to new layer masked. Now we'll click okay to apply that blur adjustment applied as a layer mask to separate the blurred from the not blurred in our photo. Now I'll just delete my original copy layer so we just have our first blur and our second blur to deal with. Selecting my masked blurred layer, I'll click on the layer mask and press command or control I to invert it. That means that all the blur adjustments that we just made are now not visible. So we only are seeing the blur from our original image. Zooming in, we can now use this layer mask in the brush tool to paint over the problem areas that we were having. So selecting the brush tool by pressing B, setting my opacity to 100%, and using a white foreground color, I'll just go and paint over the areas that are in focus that I do not want to be in focus. And using the layer mask, we're basically just telling Photoshop this is the area that I want to blur and anything that we do not paint white can stay in focus. So depending on how many details you have to go over, this might take a few minutes, but it is pretty straightforward. You just have to continue to resize the brush using the bracket keys and then just go and paint around all of the details here to blur out the background sufficiently. Now, if you ever accidentally go over an edge such as this, and now you blurred too much of an area, you can just press X on your keyboard and that will set your foreground color to black. And then you can go and paint over that to hide that blur adjustment and put things back in focus once again. Just remember to press X afterwards to set your foreground color to white so that you can continue to blur other areas throughout the photo. Now, this will take me a couple minutes to paint through all of this stuff. So I'm gonna skip ahead to when I'm done this process. So now that I've finished editing my mask and I've painted over all the in-focus areas that I wanted to be blurred, zooming in here, you can see if I turn this on and off, how we've just touched up all those areas really easily using that second neural filter on a layer mask like so. Now with these two layers together, we have successfully blurred the background, but we were able to deal with those trouble areas where the filter didn't do the best job. Now the depth blur filter is one of my favorite tools for blurring the backgrounds, like I said earlier, and it's a super fun tool to experiment with if you haven't already tried it. Honestly, going through all the neural filters will kind of blow your mind with all the amazing tools that are available in there. Now, if you enjoyed today's tutorial, make sure to hit that like button down below. And of course, make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with more tutorials just like today. Anyways, my name is Brendan from bewillcreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial.